Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the chesswebsite.com. Today we're going to be going over an in game tactic the queen versus the rook. The side with the queen is generally going to win. It's not always that easy though. Number one goal is to separate the king from the rook so that the side with the queen can capture the rook and then go on to checkmate their opponent. This is a board setup of a very easy victory. Many people would be able to look at this and very quickly see queen to g6 wins the game. We have a check and this is also forking the rook right here. Doesn't matter where the king moves to, the queen can come down, capture on b1. Then we have a queen and king versus king in game. This is a very easy victory for white, but not all the games are this easy. And if you're not familiar with the 50 move rule in chess, if a pawn has not moved or a piece has not been captured in 50 moves, the game is drawn. And there are definitely some positions with the queen versus rook that are not super easy. And making sure that you can do it under 50 moves can be a challenge if you don't know how to do it. So we're going to be going over a few examples of how to approach it, uh, how you can maneuver the queen around, separate the king from the rook. I will also have a link in the description below on the website. Uh, there are some practice board so if you want to go through play against the computer see how well you do uh, in different variations we will have that uh, for you as well so let's go ahead and get into it the first example we're going to look at is the philidor position and it is white's move trying to figure out how to win here black has done a good job of barricading himself and uh, it's tricky for white to find a win but if it were black's move it really doesn't want to go anywhere. Uh, there's no good squares for black to continue. If he tries to move his rook, because he doesn't have too many options for his king, just king over here to c8 here. Uh, rook to a7, that's going to lose. Queen up to d8, that's checkmate. If he brings his rook to c7, you can see capture here. That's not going to go extremely well. Uh, rook to d7, sometimes you give up material because you want a stalemate, meaning your king can't move. Now, you have no legal moves and you're not in check. That's actually a drawn game, so don't want to be doing that too often. Uh, rook over here to e7. Okay, queen up here, d8, uh, forking the rook. The rook is going to fall. If it comes over here to f7, uh, then you could just play queen down to b4. After the king comes, c8, you can bring queen to d6. There's no way to stop the threat here. Yeah, you can always bring your rook down, just sacrifice it. But at the end of the day, this is going to end in a checkmate. If we come back and say uh, rook to g7, uh, well then, pretty easy fork to find here on e5. And if we come back and say uh, rook to uh, h7, same sort of thing. There's no way to hold on to. You could play queen to uh, e5, maybe queen a8. You could bring the queen down here to a1, uh, king b8, uh, and then you could have the fork here on uh, b1. Now, if, if you try to bring your rook to uh, just this b file, uh, maybe rook down to uh, b3, queen e5, uh, and then you could have queen to... Uh, c8 here uh, you have lots of different options but queen to e6 this is a uh, forking so there's just no good move even if he decides to play his king somewhere king to c8 well then you just play queen to a6 pinning down the rook and there's no good move so we we can see that black has no good moves but it's white's move ideally we would like to get to the same position but have it be black's move. So really, in this end game, the ideal move is to try to maneuver to get to the same spot, but have it be black's move. Now in this specific example, the best move is gonna be queen to e5. Now if we see king to c8, well then this is just gonna be checkmate right here. There's no way to stop it. Uh, if instead maybe rook to c7, uh, this is check, also defending, but then queen takes on c7. This is going to be a quick checkmate. But really, the other option would be king to a8. And then queen down here to a1. And then after king to b8, then you could bring your queen up here to a5. And we have the exact same position as before. But you can see in this example, it is black's move now if we did come back and say uh, why don't we just bring our rook here to uh, a7 uh, that is an option as well but then the queen comes up here to h8 
uh, and this is going to be checkmate. So uh, once the queen or the king comes to uh, b8, as we talked about, queen to a5, uh, and this is the Philidor position, but now it is black's move. So as we looked at the very first example, it was one move, and there was a fork here. You can clearly see that there are some positions that are much more complicated than others, and trying to figure out the best way to separate uh, the king and the rook, uh, or just find a, a checkmate very quickly, uh, can be pretty challenging. Last example we'll look at shows that you don't necessarily have to take the rook. If you find a mating opportunity, which many times you will, just go ahead and execute. And many of them are not as many moves to find. In this example here, it's white's move. You can see the rook and the king are already pretty far away, which tends to mean that you have a much stronger and easier end game. But here, white can play queen to d1. And the king has no legal moves here. If the rook was off the board, this would be checkmate. But he can bring his rook down to e1. You've limited the options that they have here. Only one option. You can see from here, the goal is to start to separate the, the king and the rook a little bit. And you can do that by playing queen to d3. Only option is for... Uh, well, you could always bring your rook here to e2, but that's going to have a quick checkmate uh, here. So uh, if you don't want to lose right away, the only move would be to bring your king over here to g1. But now the move queen to g6, this is going to be deadly. If you bring your king to either h1 or uh, h2, uh, both of those are going to lose to queen to g2. And if you bring it back over here to f1, this is going to be queen down to g2. So at no point did we actually take the rook here on e1, uh, but we did have a strong attack that we found very early, uh, and that ended in a checkmate. So this is the queen versus rook. There's so many different variations. I uh, don't want to make a hour-long video showing all of those. Uh, what I've found most uh, valuable is to just try out different in-game positions uh, and really start to train your brain to find ways that you can maneuver the queen around the board uh, and make sure you can checkmate your opponent in under 50 moves. Many of them will be pretty quick knowing that you can uh, fork your opponent's rook pretty easily. So again, uh, check out the link below in the video. Uh, that will take you to the website, thechesswebsite.com. Uh, I do have six practice boards for this in-game. Also have practice boards for all of uh, the in-games. Uh, many of those are for members, so I went ahead and set the expectations for everyone. If you go and you're like, hey, many of these are members, I do have one designated that is not for member for this in-game. So if, if you're not... If you haven't been to the website recently and you, you didn't even know that I've added all those on there, you could check it out. Uh, and one of those will be for non-members uh, so you can see how that plays out. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, let me know if you guys want other uh, in-game tactics to go over, both on the, the videos uh, or on the website as well that you want to practice. The best way to uh, send me feedback, whether it's a video you want me to make, an opening, uh, an in-game just strategy in general, is through email and that is the chess website at gmail.com. I'll also have that in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I'll see you guys next time.